So a lot of my work is looking at the impacts of climate across a large number of sectors. And we're really trying to measure things which we have been previously unable to measure. I lived in Japan for a few years and experienced a few typhoons. And then while traveling around Southeast Asia, I was able to see the effects of typhoons in much poorer places and saw this vast difference in me being very safe in my home in Japan and seeing people whose homes were still destroyed six months after a natural disaster. And what I realized was it wasn't just, this was a big physical phenomenon that was affecting society, but it was really the economics underneath this, which explained why one person was okay and one person lost everything. And I became so interested in that economic divide that exists all around the world, that I got pulled further and further into researching what might be underlying that, that simple observation. The social cost of carbon is the cost to society of emitting an extra ton of carbon. So this is the sum of all the benefits and costs of emitting carbon dioxide. So in some places we could imagine that if we're warmer, maybe in some parts of the world, crops will grow better. Um, and so that's a benefit. And in some places, if it gets warmer, we'll have more heat waves, more people will be dying. And so that's obviously a cost. And we're doing a project at the moment that's trying to estimate this cost using a very data-driven approach to let the evidence we've been collecting for 10 years as a community of researchers really speak for itself and try to inform policy. Um, the reason why it's so interesting and why it's maybe groundbreaking is because no one has really based this idea of damages on the evidence of damages before. A lot of the policy that we were using beforehand was based on numbers that were using assumptions for what those damages might be without really letting the evidence inform it. So we're taking a very strong stand about the standard of evidence um, for climate policy. Epic is a really interesting place because it has a whole spectrum of activities from very well-informed theoretical economics work all the way through to policy outreach with a lot of very good and groundbreaking empirical work um, in between. And it's probably a place where I feel quite at home because I get to interact with with climate scientists, with economists, with people from different fields, and try to find ways to integrate among work, to answer questions which go beyond the boundaries of one traditional field. So I think that aspect of it is really interesting, the people that have gathered around here, based on the questions that are important, not based on the disciplines and how they would answer them. And then also the fact that our focus here is to make sure that the research doesn't just stop at, at the office door. The research goes out and actually affects the really important aspects of society that we're researching. Um, so it's not just research for research's sake, it's research to actually influence policy.